Hey guys, thanks for joining me here today on Feature Junkie. My name's Ed and I want to share with you guys my top 10 movies of 2022. Looking back at this year, there's been so many great movies that it was really hard to narrow down to my top 10. Um, so I'm going to give a few honorable mentions in here. But before I do, if you could leave a like down below, I'd greatly appreciate that. Now let's get into the list. So just a few movies that I want to mention that fell out of my top 10 are The Batman, The Black Phone, Prey, and Chippendale Rescue Rangers. The Batman's probably one of the best superhero films of the year. The Black Phone is easily my favorite horror film of the year. Prey was just such a surprise for me being that it's a Hulu original and they did such a great job with it. And Chippendale Rescue Rangers just gave you that beautiful hint of nostalgia and it was just so fun to watch but because this year had so many great films, unfortunately these films fell right outside of the top 10. So now that we got those out the way, I want to talk about my top 10 and I want to let you guys know that not everyone's top 10 is, you know, gonna be the same um, me I based my stuff on how I felt in the movie performances um, what really captivated me uh, and pulled me into the screen um, when watching the, the film now with that being said it, it's my number 10 on the list don't worry darling directed by Olivia Wilde starring Florence Pugh Harry Styles Chris Pine and Olivia Wilde so when this movie first came out, there was so much drama surrounding the entire cast with Olivia Wilde's uh, a beef going on with Florence Pugh. Um, you had that, that little video with Chris Pine and it looked like Harry Styles was spinning on him. A lot of people wrote this movie off as it being just a problem child type of movie. However, when I saw this movie, I couldn't say anything bad about it. It was just so uh, captivating. Like it, it made you feel like you were in that 50s um, experimental community. I think Florence Pugh without a doubt was the MVP of that movie um, and for me she is the one that really brought this movie together for me. Probably like the last 20 minutes of the movie is where there's twist after twist after twist and it, it just it's just blown away for me and that's why I have this at my top 10. Number nine on my list is The Whale. Directed by Darren Aronofsky starring Brendan Fraser, Sadie Sink, and Ty Simpkins. So as you guys know, I just did my review on The Whale and I had so much praise for Brendan Fraser um, in his portrayal as Charlie. In the final moments of the movie, I was just bawling my eyes out and it's just a simple story of a guy named Charlie who just cares so much for his daughter and just wants her to see how awesome of a person she is. I will say there are a few plot holes, which is why it's at my number nine, but the reason really for this movie being in my top 10 is all due to Brandon Fraser's performance and it, it's just incredible. I hope he wins the Oscar. Um, I hope this rejuvenates his career and I can't wait to see what he does next. Next on my list is The Banshees of Inish Iron, directed by Martin McDonough, starring Colin Farrell, Brendan Gleeson, and Carrie Condon. Here's another movie where I just wasn't expecting me to like it that much, but when I saw that Rotten Tomatoes had this as a 99% uh, percent rating, uh, for weeks going on I was like I have to watch this movie I have to see what the hype is about and I gotta tell you it says it's a comedy and there are some dark humor parts of the movie but I don't see it as that I just see it as a beautiful movie uh, of, of a story where one friend for no reason at all just decides he doesn't want to be friends with another his best friend and Colin Farrell's character just can't understand why he doesn't want to be friends anymore so there's just a lot that goes on in the film um, I can't tell you if it works out or not um, but the entire time in the film you're just hoping that you know they do become friends again and and they are able to mend their friendship I think this is definitely one of those movies that will open up those feelings that are, are kind of deep inside a person's um, insecurities of like what if uh, your friend just decides he doesn't want to be friends anymore. Um, it's it's one of those movies that it, it brings out those feelings you just didn't know were there. And that's what this movie did for me, and I can't wait to see if it wins some awards at the Oscars this year. I think it definitely should um, be nominated for uh, Picture of the Year for sure. Next is Breaking, directed by Abby Damaris Corbin, starring John Boyega, Michael K. Williams, and Salinas Leyeva. So Breaking is the story of a veteran from the Marines who um, is battling a bunch of emotional um, and mental challenges and he's trying to get his money from the VA, however the VA isn't um, giving him his money so what does he do? He tries to rob a bank. Um, he doesn't really rob it to be honest, he just wants to hold them hostage so that um, the TV networks can go out there and they can he can basically expose the VA for um, 
the fraud that they were doing on this guy's account. And while you know that, you know, holding up a bank isn't the best thing to do morally, um, and you want to hate the guy, but you just feel for him and you know, you see his struggles. I can tell you as a veteran myself, um, I can tell you the VA is not the best to work with. They're, they're pretty, uh, I don't have no words. <laughs> But they are difficult, and John Boyega's portrayal in this film um, just really uh, brought me in into an emotional level of, you know, really connecting with the character. And I think I could connect more because I am a veteran. Michael K. Williams is the uh, negotiator in this film. He does a tremendous job really making you feel um, for his side of things as well, where he doesn't want um, John Boyega's character to die. He's trying to help him out genuinely, trying to help him out from... Uh, veteran to veteran um, because he also understands like what it goes what goes in your mind in in the in those situations um, this was Michael K Williams last movie as he did pass away um, so in a way to go out in, in some aspects I think he did a tremendous job and um, I really do love this movie this is a movie that I will be watching um, for however is to come and I'll, I'll definitely be recommending this movie Number six on my list is a hidden gem for sure, and it's The Adam Project. Directed by Sean Levy, starring Ryan Reynolds, Walker Scobell, and Mark Ruffalo. All right, so this movie for me, you know, I know it's not perfect. Um, it's a Netflix movie that has its uh, plot holes, I guess you would say, um, CGI problems, a few other problems that it has in the movie, but I really don't even care. This movie is just so much fun. It's a beautiful blend of like a star wars top gun uh sci-fi fantasy that it, it's just it works perfect for me the chemistry between ryan reynolds and walker scobell um is just beautiful um then you have that father son dilemma with mark ruffalo um you have the saving the world elements you have the saving your uh love of your life you're battling um, some demons from your past and present and just really trying to figure out who you are as a person um, and I think it just comes together so well and again it wasn't a movie that I was expecting to be this good um, I sure as hell didn't think it was gonna be in my top 10 but sure enough like when I was going through these films I remembered this movie and I was like yes this has to be in there so if you haven't already please 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 just give this a shot go on Netflix and give this movie a try it's the Adam Project Number five on my list is The Northman, directed by Robert Eggers, starring Alexander Skarsgård, Nicole Kidman, and Anna Taylor-Joy. This one I saw earlier on in the year and I knew was gonna be in my top 10 uh, the moment I saw it. It's so different than movies that I, I would normally watch uh, because it's, it's a weird one, to be honest. It, it's got a lot of uh, mythology going on into it, but it's a very visceral, um, very brutal. It's a simple story of revenge. And along the way, you have Anna Taylor-Joy, who is just um, remarkable. Alexander Skarsgård, man, in this film, and he's just so brutal. Like, he, he is the real deal, and you feel everything that he's going through. Um, you feel that hate that burns inside of him, um, and they do such a well job um, with the cinema photography, um, all the elements around him. All the supporting cast, you have Ethan Hawke in here, William Defoe, just such a star-studded um, cast, really, of, of a lot of great actors and actresses um, to put on this beautiful performance of The Northman. Number four on my list is The Woman King, directed by Gina prince Bidewood, starring Viola Davis, Lasana Lynch, John Boyega, and Thuso Obendo. So this film, I remember it so clearly, me at the theaters with my wife and it was probably the worst theater experience I've ever had where I had someone behind me just talking the entire time. I politely asked them, you know, for watching the movie, can you not, you know, stop talking. But going through all that, I walked out of this theater with a smile, cheesing from left to right, um, just showing how great of a film this was to, for me to even forget what was going on around me um, and just enjoy this film. It had action, it had that badass, you know, what you would want from the women of Diomi. I think the supporting actors were so amazing with uh, Lashana Lynch. Um, I even include Viola Davis as a supporting actor because for me, the MVP of this movie without a doubt was Thusum Mbendu. It felt almost like a passing of the torch and it was just so beautiful of a movie. Um, I hope you guys have a chance to see this film because 
without a doubt, you're definitely going to be walking away um, probably wanting to go to like a karate or, or a martial arts class because they are just so badass in this film. Okay, so for me in my top three, it gets really hard for me, but I'm going to say my number three uh, movie of the year is Avatar The Way of Water. I think this movie, 13 years in the making, um, goes without saying. It's such a beautiful film. There's no other VFX, um, CGI, anything like that uh, film out there. Like, this is the top of the top. None will ever be better than this one unless it's another Avatar movie. The world of Avatar is so beautiful. It's so immersive. Um, it kind of feels like a character in the movie. Um, and then you have those elements of, you know, Jake Sully, and now he has a family. He's protecting them. It's a three-plus-hour movie, but yet you don't feel the fatigue of watching it for three hours and just sitting there. Um, it's, it's really well done. The pacing is beautiful. I think um, a lot of the stuff that they've set up for going on to future Avatar films it's it's just it's just great and i can definitely see this movie um get into that two billion dollar mark where it has to go um to make some money um but i i definitely have this in my top three um favorite films of 2022 my second favorite film of 2022 is everything everywhere all at once directed by the daniels starring michelle yo stephanie sue and jamie lee curtis this film is so hard to explain to you guys like what it's even about um it's a multiverse film um it's one of those films that you either get it and you love it or you don't understand it and you're kind of leaving the theater puzzled i guess there's just so much that goes on in this film that it's so hard to explain but there's the action scenes there's romance there's comedy um there's this mother-daughter relationship um that they're trying to go through there's this um sort of feeling of finding oneself um michelle yo's character feels like she's kind of wasted her life all these years um in the laundry mat but turns comes to find out you know going through the multiverse seeing different versions of yourself why while it might look like the best to be a top chef or um a movie star at, at, and in some realms it doesn't mean that you're always the happiest and that's such a powerful story in itself going back and forth between my number one and number two for so long um but in the end it's my number two um i think you guys should definitely check this movie out everything everywhere at once you won't be disappointed i guarantee it so now we're at my top number one film of 2022 and i think you guys can guess it because of my enthusiasm when it first came out and it's top gun maverick directed by joseph krasinski starring tom cruise Jennifer Connelly and Miles Teller. This was a movie that definitely defied the odds of coming out almost 30 years after the original Top Gun. I think why I love this movie so much is because it's so nostalgic where they used a bunch of elements from the first movie that ties in with the um, Maverick. Um, but it's one of those movies that you don't really have to see the first one as well to enjoy it. It did such an amazing job at the box office. It grossed over a, a billion dollars, I believe. This is a film for me that, to be honest, I can say it's better than the first Top Gun film. There's just so much going on in this film. It's It kept me at the edge of my seat the entire time. In that last 30, 40 minutes, I was gasping for air because I felt like I was going through those high stakes situations with them. They have the ability to make a third film. I don't know if they will with Miles Teller um, continuing the story. Glenn Powell's an amazing job as well. Um, but Tom Cruise, he delivers, um, he shows you why he is the, one of the greatest movie stars in the world. Um, and Top Gun Maverick, that's my number one film of the year. Um, definitely check it out. I think you guys won't be disappointed for sure. So those are my top 10 movies of 2022. I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say. If you agreed with my list, if you didn't. Um, and I want to hear what your list is as well. What were your top movies of the year? Leave those in the comments down below. And if you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe, hit that notification icon down below so you know I'm going live or dropping new content. And I want to thank you guys so much for joining me here today on Feature Junkie.